For those who don't know me, my name is Jesse Lumsden. I am a Canadian Olympic bobsledder. I am a former CFL football player. And as an athlete, I can't emphasize enough how important staying focused on the task at hand is. If not just for winning, but for crossing the finish line safely. And if any of you guys were watching last year, around this time, me and my teammates know a little bit about that. And it wasn't winning the race. Bobsled races are won and lost by fractions of a second. The difference between gold and silver is a blink of an eye. Or going from a silver medal position to crossing the finish line on your face, which I don't recommend. That being said, I don't believe Justin Cripps, my pilot, was texting on his phone while driving in Sochi last year. Attention and focus is very important and not just on the bob track. Too many car collisions are caused by people getting distracted by an alert on their phone and taking their eyes off the road just for a split second. It's a massive problem and I am proud to be here with APCO Colony, the Calgary Police Service, and the co-workers, co-cooperators, I'm sorry Paul, co-workers, the cooperators to share a fantastic new technology solution that will work to end distracted driving. OneTap is a practical technology solution that will help, stay, help you stay focused while keeping you connected. To begin, Police Chief Rick Hansen will share a few words on distracted driving. He will be followed by Ted Howard, the founder of App Colony, who will explain why One, OneTap was developed and why it is so effective. Paul Mladzik, Paul Mladzik, sorry, I apologize, will then share a few words regarding cooperators' decision to support OneTap and the importance of ending distracted driving on the Canadian roads. Our event will wrap up with a Q&A session, so please hold your questions until that point. And following that, there will be opportunities for one-on-one -on -one and just wait till after the Q&A to find Sarah and she will direct you accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, February is Distracted Drivers, Driving Month in Alberta. So without any further delay, I am proud to welcome Rick Hansen, the police chief of this great city, to share the impact of distracted driving on our roads. Thanks a lot, Jesse, and uh, thanks for everybody uh, for being here uh, for something that's as important as this. And MLA Mo Emery, it's good to see you here. Thank you, because it's been, uh, you know, working with the province is vital in regard to all this because it is, uh, it's a critical safety issue. We've been talking about distracted driving for a lot of years, and um, we know a couple things. Number one, that uh, the carnage that's caused by distracted driving now has, in a number of studies, particularly in the U.S., shown to be greater than that caused by impaired driving. People are dying, people are being hurt uh, needlessly for something that is so preventable. And we've been saying for years, the issue is more than just enforcement. The issue is more than just writing people a ticket. The issue is more than demerit points. The issue is best addressed by people who self-regulate. Now, when you talk to people who are distracted, who are busy texting as they drive and you pull them over or, or distracted because they're on their phone, it's less about the message they're getting and more about not being able to disconnect from a piece of technology. It's almost an obsession, an addiction, depends on who you talk to. But we said for years there needs to be a technology, a technological solution to this issue. And um, up steps Ted Hellard and, and Nap Colony. And uh, I have to tell you, we're just thrilled to be here. And Paul, thank you so much for, for the support that's been provided to this. Because as a parent and as a grandparent, you get worried about what could happen, not only with your own kids or grandkids succumbing to the temptation, but by the hazards posed by other people that are out there that aren't paying attention. We've all seen it, we've all observed it, we've all to some degree been victimized by it. And you know what, at the end of the day, uh, it's a risk that can be avoided. So the numbers speak for themselves. I don't wanna get too much into Ted's presentation. All I can tell you is that uh, we are absolutely thrilled, we're excited, and we're just so gratified that Ted and his company took this on 
and have come up with an amazing solution that makes perfect sense. It's easy, it's, the, it's what we all need to do to allow us to commit to an approach that's going to make the streets safer and it's literally going to save lives. It's literally going to save lives. So uh, Jesse, you know when I look at you I think, yeah I used to look like that when I was younger. Actually no I didn't ever look that good. But uh, Jesse, thank you so much for being here and uh, taking the lead on this and, and I'll just turn it over to you and my thanks to all of you for being here but especially to, to Ted and Paul for uh, all the work that's been done in making this come to where it is today. So thank you. Back to you, Jesse. Thank you, Chief Hansen. Oh, I got that 20 bucks for you outside <laughs> for afterwards. Next up, I am thrilled to introduce a man many of you already know. The former co-owner co of the Calgary Stampeders and founder of App Colony, Ted Hellard. I was lucky enough and had the pleasure of playing for Ted as a Calgary Stampeder in my last year in the CFL in 2010. Ted has always been at the forefront of using technology to create practical business solutions. This time, Ted and his fantastic team of developers at App Colony have turned their attention to the most pressing issue on our roads, <coughs> one that's impacting millions of Canadians. They understood that at the heart of the matter, distracted driving is a problem born out of technology, and it needs a technological solution. Here to tell you more about OneTap, Please welcome Ted Hellard. Thanks everybody for coming out today. It's, uh, it's been an interesting journey getting us to this point. Um, we know we're not even close to being through yet, but um, it's been a fantastic uh, experience uh, coming to this point in time. Uh, the, the journey to establish OneTap started about a year ago, almost a year ago now. Uh, App Colony is really a, it's a very uh, young and an innovative type of company. We, we're really considered an incubator. So what we actually do is we, we create our own ideas and our own products through our own staff's ideations. And we were having an ideation session about a year ago and, and one of our staff members brought up the concept of distracted driving. And, and to be honest, I kind of looked at him and said, well, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Like, we, there isn't something out already? And he said, no, like there, believe it or not, there really isn't a technology out yet that's handling distracted driving the way it should be handled. And we sat back and talked about it. And you know, we're a business like anybody else, so we tried to figure out how a, a business model would work around it. But to be honest, as we got going through it, we decided, you know, this is really something, very rarely in life do you get a chance to do something that's win-win, where you can actually build something, you know, that might make some business sense, but can actually uh, save some lives. I don't know, I've got a couple of people in here who were with Critical Mass, some senior people, and I always used to tell people at Critical Mass, hey, we're just building websites here, we're not saving lives. And the truth is, this is the one time I actually looked at my staff and said, you know what, we might actually be able to save some lives here. We might be able to develop technology that'll do that. So with that came the development of OneTap. You're going to see, we're going to have the screens going here and can walk you through the technology. But what was critical to us as we started engaging in this, in, in this discovery was that we found out it wasn't really the phone. All of you have a phone, all of you have an on-off button, all of you have a trunk, all of you have an airplane mode. So when you get in a car, it's very, you have your own app already. It's very simple to eliminate distracted driving. Turn your phone off, put it in airplane mode, put it in your trunk. Clearly that wasn't happening. Distracted driving accidents, distracting driving incidents were on the rise. Police were making efforts to make sure that they, they tried to catch us up as they can. Pledges were being made in various websites, but it was continuing to rise. And what became very clear to us, it is, the, it is the addiction to the phone that is the actual issue and the actual problem, the connectivity. Smartphones are the most rapidly adopted consumer technology in the history of mankind. Ten times faster than the PC revolution and twice as fast as the internet. There has never been a collaborative communicated tool that is moving at this speed. There are over 245 million iOS and Android uh, phones in the North America today. 245 million connection points. Uh, four out of five people will not leave their house without their phone. They will literally stop where they are, go back into their house to get their phone to bring it back into their severe, severe of insolence. People, that's called addiction. Call it obsession. Call it whatever you want. But bottom line is it, it, is, it is necessary for us. These are stunning stats. 176 million people worldwide will open over 60 apps a day on their phone. 60 apps 
a day, 176 million people. This is the most stunning stat of all. Canadians send 10 million text messages every hour, 285 million text messages a day, and in the first quarter of 2013, Canadians sent 24 billion texts. How could not some of them been by people behind a wheel? Just do the math. It's not possible to send that many texts considering how long we spend in cars. So it became very clear to us the problem is phone. It's actually a psychologically recognized phobia. It's called nomophobia. It stands for no more phone phobia. And basically, uh, I'll, I'll describe it to yourself how you'll know if you have nomophobia. When you notice your phone is not in your sphere of influence, it's out of sight, you can't hear it. Do you stop what you're doing? Do you go seek out your phone? Do you bring it back into your sphere of influence? If you do this, welcome. You're in the world of nomophobia. And at this point, psychologists believe that over two-thirds of smartphone users are nomophobic. So it became very obvious we had to deal with the problem from the perspective of the actual addiction itself, the obsession. What were the consequences of this always connected society? So that was the next thing we want to look at. Okay, so we know what the issue is, but really what is the problem? What, what are the consequences of it? 660,000 people in any given second of any day are on the phone in their car, either texting or, or on the phone. Two-thirds of the population of Calgary, any second, any day, is on the phone while they're driving. If you take, when you text, it takes approximately 4.6 seconds, the average text. It's the equivalent of driving a CFL football field at 55 miles an hour, completely blind. The risk of collision when you're texting is 23 times greater. This was done by a very, very large uh, study done by the Virginia uh, Tech Transport Institute, 23 times greater. Economic, what's the economic impact? In 2012, the government of Canada did a study on distracted driving. They estimated the economic impact of the accidents themselves into the healthcare system and lost producti productivity was $10 billion. 1% of the entire GDP of Canada. In Alberta, that would be over a billion dollars. That would be over a thousand dollars per driver. It's obviously a massive economic uh, impact. Now the worst impact of all. Any given day in North America, 11 teens are killed from distracted driving. Any given day. Sources estimate that from 2010 in Canada, distracted driving took over 2,500 lives since 2010. It's an extremely serious problem. One of the most serious problems that you can have that revolve around driving. So that became very clear to us. You know, we had to try to make a difference. The next thing we want to do before we develop the product is actually go out to Canadians and find out what they think. Instead of us trying to assume what they think, let's find out what they think. We commissioned a study by Insight Matters. It was a, it was a large study and a very extensive study and we got some incredible information. I, I, you know, I'd love to uh, share it all with you, but three very critical things we found out. We asked the question of, of how important was it that this distracted driving issue was dealt with. 98% answered, uh, said important. 91 said extremely important. In the history of them doing surveys, they've never had a, such a polarizing answer to a single question. 91% said it's the most extremely important thing you could do. Here's an, an interesting statement. Um, when it came to talking, asking about talking on, that was texting, how important did they think it was about talking on blue, mobile phone using Bluetooth? 50% of Canadians believe you should not be able to use Bluetooth at all. And the studies will back that up. You are five times more likely to have an accident even when you're talking on Bluetooth compared to not. The human brain cannot multitask. It always places something forward and something backwards. Uh, 59, the, we asked about solutions. What would be the key solutions? The top two solutions, basically equal, were increasing the fines and assigning demerits. And equal to that was Canadians believe a technical solution will, will reduce distracted driving. So really the number one solution they came up with that they wanted to see was a technical solution to to, to secure a technical problem. This is the one that motivated us the most. 27% of people said they would pay. And originally we were going to run an, a typical app model, which is an SAS model where you pay per month. 
Then we saw the stat, 77% of Canadians said if this app was free, they would download it. And as a company, we just could not do it. We could not do it not for free. The impact was too great. 300% more people will take this app down because it's free. And imagine what impact that can have in terms of, of saving lives. Uh, driving requires, as Jesse mentioned, tremendous focus. And when you pick up your phone just a split second, you interrupt that focus. One tap is all it takes on your phone to set off a text. It's a stu super scary problem. But if one tap is all it takes for a serious accident to happen, we thought maybe one tap is all it takes to make people safe. At any given moment, 660,000 people are using their cell phones while driving. Most of us are guilty of this. Just ask yourself how often you look at your phone while driving. And because most people do it, distracted driving has become the number one killer on the roads. It's as simple as reading a text message or checking the caller ID. But each second your eyes aren't on the road, each time you look down to tap your phone, you're driving blind and the consequences can be very real. But if one tap is all it takes to cause an accident, maybe one tap is all it takes to prevent it. Introducing OneTap, an app that keeps an eye on your phone so you can keep your eyes on the road. OneTap knows when you're behind the wheel and automatically works to keep you free from distraction, not by simply blocking your alerts, but by intelligently managing calls, text, and notifications in a way that makes sense. The app responds to calls and texts for you, letting people know you're on the road and even when you'll be available. When there's an urgent call, your phone will prompt you to pull over to respond safely. You have received an urgent alert from Mary Brand. It's like having a personal assistant, so you can stay focused while you drive, but don't have to worry about missing anything on your phone. OneTap also tracks your safe driving habits, showing you how you compare to others. And by connecting you with your family, the app doesn't just help keep you safe, it reassures you that they're safe too. As a parent, you'll enjoy a little more peace of mind when you hand over the keys. One tap, that's all it takes. One tap to drive safe. One tap to protect your family. And one tap to save lives. So what we wanted to do is, is let you see how the degree of connectivity of OneTap works. Because it's very critical. This is, has to be a voluntary solution. People, you can't mandate any technology to anybody. We can't mandate somebody to turn an app on. They simply won't download it. So we had to make the connectivity from l small amounts of connectivity up to large amounts of connectivity and allow the user to be able to determine what type of connectivity they wanted, how, how engrossed they wanted to be with the product. And to show you, the easiest way for me to show that to you is create four everyday scenarios for you and have you get a feel for how the app would work. So we've created some characters. So the first character you're going to introduce you to is compulsively detailed Laura. She has clothes that are all lined up. Her desk is absolutely perfect. But she doesn't like people in her lives. So she doesn't want a great deal of connectivity. So in Laura's case, the actors in this scene, Laura's the driver, Laura's boyfriend, John is the texter. Laura's driving back to the office from lunch. Laura wants to manually launch her app, and Laura wants to uh, add her estimated driving time. So as we start out, you can see that uh, the app is launched. Laura is launching it manually. She's hitting drive. As she hits drive, she's able to actually start to dictate the amount of time that she's going to be driving. She's set that time. She's now that uh, the app is about to launch, and then she's about to drive. So the app is now running, and she's in pure uh, driver mode. Um, her, her boyfriend has just been out walking the dog. They had a previous conversation before lunch. He's now texting to her how the day went, how the dog, how much fun they had at the park, and asking how her lunch was. When eventually, when he hits this text and sends it to, to her, she is not going to receive anything um, because it's being blocked right now. So the message will go off to Laura. Her, Laura. her phone is still quiet and silent while she's continuing to focus on the road. John gets the text back that says, I'll be driving for another 20 minutes. If it's urgent, punch in 6198. It's not urgent for John. He doesn't need to continue this conversation. He'll just get in contact with her later. Laura gets to the office. She finishes. She get, takes her phone out of the cradle, goes up to the office. She has time now to check her messages. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So she hits her messages, finds out <clears throat> that John uh, has responded, and then she's going to respond to John. So effectively, that whole scenario took place with no communication going on in the car. <clears throat> John was connected. He felt connected through the whole thing. And Laura felt comfortable and connected through the whole thing. But that's the minimum style of connectivity that goes on with one tap. I, I forgot to mention that um, any similarity between anybody in this room and the characters we're creating here is strictly coincidental. <laughs> so we have controlling, scatterbrained Ted with long hair and his buddy the monkey over here, um, which is kind of my life. Um, I have a lot of people reporting to me. I'm pretty controlling, so I like to be involved in a ton of decisions. To be honest, before one tap came along, on any given day, if I went on an hour drive, I would get between 100 and 150 texts. And I'm ashamed to admit it, but I probably answered 50 of them uh, while I was driving. I am the addict, uh, without question, self-professed. And I was not capable of controlling myself. Um, Ted is the driver. Alex is the texting salesman. Ted is driving the scenario. Ted's driving from Calgary to Red Deer. I'm scatterbrained. I won't remember to launch an app when I get in a car, so I'm going to turn it into auto launch. So every time I get in a moving vehicle that I'm driving, my app is going to launch. I don't have to manually launch it. And we're going to show you how that's set. I want to be able to hide my location, so I don't want people being able to map me. Um, I want to be I want to be private in terms of my location and I know when I get calls I'm going to have to make decisions so I want my calls blocked because I don't want to get in a discussion where I have to actually process information when I'm driving so that's basically my setup as you can see I come in I'm going to hide my location quickly with a simple button I'm going to uh, put myself in auto drive I will have done this before I got in the car so I would already be launching um, and I'm blocking my Bluetooth. I put my phone in my cradle or in my, my cup holder and now I'm off to Red Deer. During my trip to Red Deer, um, Alex, my salesman, has just gotten out of a meeting. We had a conversation before I left and to me, he's, he's responding to me. He's telling me the meeting went really well but he needs some answers on positioning. So he's going to get back that I'm driving. He gets the auto response. Um, you can see my phone, Ted's phone, is quiet. I'm simply focusing on the road. But he needs to get in contact with me. So he types in the urgent, ur urgent code text. That's going to come forward uh, to us. He gets the response, and you're you going to see. You have received an urgent alert from Alex. Please pull over to a safe area to respond. So Ted got the urgent message over his phone. He pulls over off the road into a parking lot to a safe place. He now takes his phone. He can pull it up. It immediately brings back the message that he got from Alex. He's able to see all of his other parts of the conversation. He's able to, he says, okay, Alex, I'll give you a call and I'll respond to what we're doing for positioning. He's in a parking stall right now. He goes through the conversation with Alex, gives him the information. Once he's finished that confirmation, he puts his phone back in the, in the cup holder, starts back out on the road, and then the app will immediately launch back into driver mode. So he's been able to deal with all important calls on the way to Red Deer, but he's also been able to stack calls that weren't important. But he knows he's fully connected. So Ted the guy that's not the guy here, I actually now drive very relaxed. I use it. I, oh, I know if I, something's really important, somebody will get to me. But I also know that all these other beeps and tweaks and tangs don't really mean anything. And I can deal with them at a later time. So it gives me that sense of still being connected even though I'm blocked in a disconnected situation. The third, third such scenario we want to talk about is the totally connected family. This is a family who loves each other and wants to know everything about each other. The mother and the father want to be connected. They want to see where their kids are. They want the full meal deal that one tap can offer. In this scenario, Jason, the husband, is returning from work. Sarah, the wife, is texting. Uh, Sarah needs him to grab some steaks on the way home. So urgent doesn't necessarily mean a hospital visit. It can mean saving a bunch of time for me having to get all the way home and having to go back and get something that was necessary. Jason wants to use auto launch in the app. He's the same as Ted. He likes it to launch immediately. He wants to share his location. So he actually wants his family members to be able to see where he is. Uh, and Jason wants to allow his friends and family to map him. So in this case, he's setting up <coughs> his friends. He has Sarah in his friends group. So M Sarah will be able to see his location and be able to map him. He's now coming home from work. Sarah didn't realize he was coming from home this early. She still thinks he's working. So she's sending a text off to him, uh, basically asking him to, to um, bring home some steaks for supper. 
uh, because some friends have come into town. She's got the kids. She can't go get them. Um, she still thinks he's at work at the time. She doesn't realize that he's actually driving. So once she sends this off to him, you're going to see that uh, uh, Jason is going to get nothing because he's in blocker mode. He's in driver mode. She gets back the, uh, that, he, that Jason's driving. Before she sends the urgent, she actually maps him. She goes on the phone on her app and checks to see where Jason is. And she can see from the map that where Jason is. And once she sees where he is, she sees that he's close to their favorite butcher shop. So she says, okay, he can pick up the steaks. At that point in time, she hits the urgent notification button. And then that message goes we off to Jason. We have received an urgent alert from Sarah. Please pull over to a safe area to respond. So he pulls over. He knows he's got a message from Sarah, and it's his wife, so of course he's going to pull over. Um, he gets to a safe spot. He's able to then pick up his phone and check and see that the, the message, and Sarah's saying, hey, we got some friends coming. Can you grab some steaks? Now, what would have happened in the normal? One of two things would have happened. Either he would have answered it, the text, live while he was driving, or he would have had his phone off and had to come all the way home, and she would have said, hey, uh, Jason, we need some steaks, and he would have had to go all the way back to where it was. So there's some very practical issues that are being solved by this, by this tool. It's not just about the urgent size. But what is being solved is that whole scenario went through and no touch of the phone happened while the car was being driven, which is what our goal is. The final scenario here to have a look at is really giving you an introduction of where we're going with this app. Uh, this is Steffi. We call her Seeking Independence. She's the daughter of Sarah. And basically, this is where one tap for parent and teens is going. Uh, Steffi's the teenage driver. Sarah, the same is the mother. She's part of the connected family. And what Sarah wants, the mother wants, she wants the app on at all times. She doesn't want her teenager to be able to turn the app off. If that app is turned off in the one tap for teens, Sarah is notified immediately. She wants Bluetooth to be blocked at all times. She doesn't want her daughter to take any calls while she's driving. Uh, Sarah, the mother, who's paying for the phone in the car, uh, wants to be notified when her teenager's on the road. So when her teenager is actually in a driving situation, Sarah wants to know she's in a driving situation and wants to be able to map her, wants to be able to see where she's at. But uh, Sarah also wants a reward program that engages her teenager, something that makes her teenager want to participate, want to achieve certain goals, no hours of block text, so on and so forth. And she wants social features <coughs> that allow teenagers to support and engage each other. So she wants the tool to be more than just authoritarian. In this scenario, Steffi, that's the teenager, is at a movie. As she leaves the movie, she gets into the car. She starts her drive home. Her mother, Sarah, is notified that Steffi's now on the road. Her mother then can go on and look and see where Steffi's at. She's able to see that Steffi is now heading towards home after the movie. Um, and she's now sending a text to her. She knows Sarah or Steffi won't get this text in the car, but she's just congratulating her, saying, thank you very much for driving safe. You know, we really appreciate you, you sticking with the program and what we were trying to do. Um, she sends it to her. Steffi now is pulling up home from the movie. As she gets to the house and gets out of the car, when it comes to a complete stop, she's going to be able to see that text that come for her mom hopefully have a little bit of pride that she was, you know, that she was sticking with the program and the thanks that comes from her parents. And then she's going to head out back because mom told them that they were out back uh, have, uh, at the fire. So this is a more authoritarian approach, but this is one that is only parents for teens, that they bring on for teens. All the other ones are completely user controlled in the different levels. Um, we have a number of social engagement features. Uh, that, that do things from driving data. We're recording driving data that you get to see your own driving data. So you get to see how many blocked minutes of, of distracted free driving have I done? How many texts have I done? You can see it at a personal level. You can see it at a friend's level. So you can see how many texts as a group you're blocking, how many hours that you're blocking. And you can actually see it at a world level. You can see how the world is changing right before your eyes. You can start to see how many minutes the whole of Canada is blocking, how many hours tens of thousands of hours of being driven distracted free. Uh, you can, if you turn it on, it's your choice, but you can also join your friends and then you're able to see where they are as well. It's all voluntary in terms of how that goes. So there's a number of data to keep this uh, engaged. We're, we're working with corporations now to create a reward, reward component. So when you hit certain levels of blocking text or how many hours you've done, you will now be put into a reward system. Corporations will be giving you discounts off various products, and there will be social rewards. Maybe I hit 200 block text, 
and uh, Shell Oil will plant 10 trees for me or provide a free hot lunch to underprivileged children. Um, so there's a whole rewards program that revolves and a whole social program that is engaged. Why? Because this is part of the addiction. So we want people to be engaged with the phone so that this becomes part of what they want to do. There is a number of great companies that are, have put together a tremendous number of pledges and different types of social programs online. And the police forces are up, stepping up their enforcement and government is looking at everything from fines to demerits. And all of those we applaud, they are all part of the solution. But they don't work on their own. They've been around for three or four years now and distracted driving is continuing to increase. And we firmly believe that this technology tool is what can help to solve this. We want to see these kind of billboards around Canada that show, you know, 2,132,000 2, <clears throat> distracted free minutes have been put out there and have been contributed to. Um, we really need you guys. This is uh, social tools or viral tools, and we have to get the word out. We don't have the money. As you can see, we've built this on our own, and it's, it's a freebie. Uh, basically, we don't have the money to go and run great big TV ads. We have to get the word out. And once the word gets out, it can grow very, very fast virally. And we believe, you know, with your help, we can make a difference um, with hashtag just one tap and available at getonetap.com. Thank you very much from App Colony side of view. And, and with that, uh, introduce Paul Mladzic from Cooperators. Yeah. Thanks very much, Ted. Um, I'm Paul Malazic. I'm the Vice President of uh, Marketing and Communications for the Cooperators Group. And uh, on behalf of our staff and our advisors from coast to coast, we're very pleased uh, to be the lead sponsor for, for OneTap. Uh, our company is a cooperative, and so we are from coast to coast, and we are based on cooperative values. And one of the things that we value very much is public safety. We do a lot in this space. And we want to make sure that we strengthen our communities and do things that help them. And that's why uh, we are participating in OneTap. Uh, our financial sponsorship is solely for the uh, purpose of making sure that we offset the development and promotional costs of this so that it can be offered free to all Canadians. And uh, we hope actually that other co corporations step up and, and help us with that challenge. This is a social good and as Ted mentioned and as the Chief mentioned, it will literally save lives. We, uh, we really believe that what is happening here is this technological solution is, is free and like Ted said, there are a lot of other things out there. We've been asked to participate in many other types of programs, but we really didn't see where the value for the user was in a lot of those things. It was just basically saying, turn it off or, or take a pledge. This actually provides value in terms of the social features, in terms of the uh, community, and in terms of fun and rewards. And we think for that reason it will be very, very successful in the Canadian marketplace. It's a Canadian-made solution, which is also something we believe in uh, very much. We have been promoting safety programs across Canada for homes, for businesses, for people, and also for cars. And uh, in fact, we have another big program that runs here in Calgary and, and around the country uh, called Buckle Up Bears, which is car safety seats, because we know what happens on the roads. Being a national insurer, this issue has really risen to the top of our radar over the last few years. We have seen the impact on the roads and it is really, really scary what's going on right now. Of course there's physical damage to cars but that can be fixed. It's really the damage to people that is, that is so disturbing. The injuries and even the deaths and increasingly that is among younger people who are more addicted to this technology than anybody. And we want to make sure that we play our part in making sure that this is available free and hoping people will step up and, and take that challenge. So on behalf of the cooperators, we're asking people to do the right thing, download the OneTap app and use it. And we hope that uh, to get the support of, of media, corporations and all sorts of public safety individuals and police chiefs have been very, very good about stepping up with this. And we hope that people do uh, download OneTap and make a difference going forward. So on behalf of the cooperators, thank you very much for attending today. Paul, Ted, thank you. Those numbers are mind-blowing. And it's, I'm sitting here and standing at the back and, 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 and sitting in the chair and thinking, I'm like, well, you know, 
and listening to the chief talk about this concern of his children and grandchildren. Well, what, you know, kids, what are you gonna, how are you going to get them to turn it off? How are you going to get them to do this? And you covered everything. All the loopholes have been covered. And, and, and leave it to an athlete to find a way to be competitive with a safe driving app. So I know with my friends and family and loved ones, I will be the safest one in uh, seeking those rewards. I'd now like to open the floor um, for questions to our uh, presenters. So if anybody has a question, please feel free to step up, raise your hand. I guess, when is this going to be available on an iPhone? Obviously, most people in this room are carrying one. Do you have a timeline for that concern that it's not available? It's, uh, basically, the, the, uh, sorry. The, um, the numbers on it are pretty equal. There's about 43% uh, of the Canadian population is Android, 37 is iPhone, and the rest are those straggling Blackberry guys. Um, but um, uh, we hope to have the iPhone solution by probably late spring, early summer. Um, the iPhone infrastructure, the operating system is far more complicated than the Android. Um, so being able to take these kind of steps is more difficult, but you know we're in the middle of it, and, and we hope to be able to launch that by late spring. Um, but it is at Android, believe it or not. I know Alberta is actually an iPhone uh, um, ha haven, but across Canada, Android is actually the larger uh, it's dominant phone. Now on the App Store, it's available right now. Yeah, right now. It, uh, in, in not the App Store in Google Play okay. for Android. Yeah. You talked a little bit about I guess the social reward. What motivates somebody who's already distracted driving? Uh, to download this app? The, the truth is the pure, you know, compulsive texter won't take this app down. Uh, the one who will take it down is me. I don't want to text. Uh, you know, I, I know the consequences. I don't, I can't tell you how many close calls I've had that have been a result of my phone. Uh, well, thank God, uh, you know, I didn't hurt somebody. We're the ones, which we're the vast majority. Uh, the real, real freakazoids, they're not taking an app down. They don't put their seatbelt on either. They can get away with it. We want to reach that 80% who actually care, but just don't know how to stop. And, um, and they will take it down because for once they actually can feel connected. The key is being connected. I've always told people the reason I won't turn my phone off is what if something somebody thinks is important is trying to get me? Um, we take care of that with our one-to-one -one urgent connective technology. You, you travel knowing that that's there all the time. So you just relax. I mean, I've used it and it's, it's, it's like a whole different world. You literally drive around with nothing. And then occasionally you get a beep and you pull over and you deal with it. And you deal with it fast and efficiently and you get back on the road. Uh, not, no, no product exists at the level that we've brought in this with the urgent technology and also with the social and reward programs. There are products out there that will block texts um, and, and, if, and some of them will even respond, say you're driving, but that's where the connectivity stops. So that's really not a heck of a lot different than turning your phone off. And was it developed only on the private uh, funds or is yes. it? driving. Is this something you see as something that will work in the meantime? Are you still pushing hard for that? Oh, absolutely. As, as Ted said, there's no one solution to this. Uh, it's going to take a multitude of solutions. Uh, people have, have said exactly what Ted has said, and there's also that other piece where people don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. There's always the person at the other end says, I texted you 30 minutes ago. Are you ignoring me? Are you mad at me? The reality is, um, for those thinking people, that uh, want to avoid a ticket, want to avoid demerits, want to avoid a collision, want to avoid hurting somebody, and want to avoid losing their, la their, their license, there's a solution. For those people who want to continue putting their life and other people's lives at risk, then we're going to go after them and we're going to write tickets and they're going to pay fines, get demerits, and eventually lose their license. So um, this, what really makes this worthwhile is for the thinking person, it's, it's truly a solution that addresses the concerns of missing an, an urgent message or, you know, somebody that gets hurt feelings when you don't reply within 30 seconds when they send you a text. So uh, you can't uh, have one solution for everything. There's multiple solutions for every problem, and, and I think what we have here is the confluence of common sense and technology with, uh, with enforcement. Chief, can you speak at all to the, the, the difficulties in enforcing this distracted driving law on Calgary's roads? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, the, uh, one of them is, uh, you know, 
evidence in court uh, is one thing that's always a challenge. Um, the other is that we can't be everywhere all the time. You saw the numbers that went on the screen, the number of people that are actually uh, texting and uh, as they drive uh, is, is staggering. We couldn't possibly monitor all that. And, and as has been said, it's, uh, it's a habit. People are running offices out of their cars knowing that the $171 fine is just the cost of doing business. So, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, the challenges are it's such a frequent event that we can't possibly be everywhere all the time. Do you think a stiffer penalty, such as a higher fine or, uh, like Jenna mentioned, uh, those demerits might be a bit more of a deterrent? I think demerits are a far greater deterrent than a, than a fine. Generally, fines are the cost of doing business. They're talking about huge fines in some places in the States, up to $5,000. I uh, don't know if they've actually implemented that or it's just a threat, but it's certainly been out there. Um, I, I think that uh, for those who can't put their phones down, even when the technology is there, the demerit points combined with the license suspension and the subsequent insurance rates that, that'll hit them is the other solution to it. Maybe another question uh, for Ted. Um, will this app block any alerts or any notifications for other apps, like news alerts or stuff like it that? Block, it blocks all notifications, yeah. We've been working about 10 or 11 months in the software. Um, so we started about, again, the idea about a year ago. One thing I should add, I think that's really important, in the beta side, what we found is we didn't find a massive change in the driver because in all honesty for the driver, he's not really doing much. Uh, the phone has basically gone silent. What we're finding is a massive change in what the texter does. So the texter right now is texting. Normally he's continuing to text because he's not getting a response. Once he gets a response back that says you, you are driving, they leave you alone. Like they don't want to kill you either. They don't want to be the one that puts you in an accident situation. So the, actually the biggest modification and character change is actually happening in the person doing the texting. The driver is just quietly driving along. And so we found that's one of the biggest things. That was a surprise to us. How quickly once somebody knew you were on the phone, that they just left you alone. They knew at approximate time when you were going to be done and they waited till you were done. If it was really urgent, um, then they would move forward with the number and interrupt you and have you pull over. But for the most part, the texting just stopped and they would wait until you were finished. So of those 24 billion texts, I wonder how many of them will repeat text or aggravated text or why aren't you texting me text? A big, big number of them are. And if we can cut that out, we think we basically solve most of the problem. Yes. Well, there's a passenger mode. So the, if, because w when you're in the car, if you're in a car as a passenger, you have to be able to use your phone. So you can go into passenger mode. When you go into passenger mode, in the next release, it's going to ask you to confirm that you're in passenger mode. It's still voluntary. Um, but we do know as a driver, when we, we have the accelerometer down to the point where we know when you've actually lifted the phone. Now, we can't stop you. Like we, you know, in the end, like I said, we can't stop you from killing yourself but we can take care of your addiction. And we firmly believe that most people do not want to endanger their lives and they don't want to endanger others. They just don't know how to stop. Does Google Map work with that? It will in the next version, uh, it will, but only in voice. So it will only read the driving instructions to you. You will not be able to see the instructions because that's a distraction. The moment you pick that phone up and look at the instructions, you're distracted. So it would allow for the turn right at, you know, 100 yards to still occur, but not for the visual to occur. So what's the difference then between that and, and Bluetooth? Well, it, between voice coming over, there isn't, there isn't a, a, a lot. The single biggest difference is that in Bluetooth, if it was a three-word sentence, there really is no difference. Bluetooth calls, what generally happens in Bluetooth is I'm having a conversation, and that conversation is asking me to process information. Somebody's talking to you about something, a decision I have to make or whatever it may be. And in the human brain, when you're asked to process information, that always comes to the forefront of the human brain and then the other activity goes to the back, which in this case would be the driving. So there is no way for us to completely not have a voice. We have to notify you to pull over. But we make it very, you notice how that voice was very short and concise. You have an urgent message from Mary, pull over. So, we, we, we have very, very little time spending for you to have to process. I think it's incredible, but it's not surprising that OneTap is a practical technology solution to this problem was created here in Calgary by these three great leaders. Um, after the Scrum is done, go try the app. 
go download the app, be a part of the solution, and thank you very much for coming.